Welcome back. This is the second of two lectures on the inclusion-exclusion principle. So recall we have n finite sets, and we have a formula for the order of the union. It's the sum of the orders of the SIs minus the orders of the intersections of pairs plus the order of the intersection of triples and so on down to plus or minus the order of the intersection of all n of them. Well, before I go on, I, I want to prove this. I, I drew a picture which illustrates why it's true, but let's give a slightly more formal proof. Uh, so suppose we have these n sets and we have a single element x, and it's contained in k of the sets si. Uh, well, after renumbering, we may as well assume that it's the first k sets. So you have an element x, and it's in set 1, s1 through sk, and not in the remaining. And it should contribute 1 to this formula. So we're counting it once. And so let's con look at the contribution of x to the right-hand side of this formula. W what is it going to be? Well, from the summation of si terms, it's going to occur in k of these, the first k terms. It's the sum from 1 to n, and the first k contain it. So you get a contribution of k from this. Uh, now how about the second sum and? Well, si intersect as j. Um, it's the pairs i and j where i and j are between 1 and k, and there's k choose 2 of those. And similarly, there's k choose 3 triples of sets. Uh, where, uh, which contain x. So the, the next term contributes a k choose 3. And so if you keep going like this, you see that the contribution to the right-hand side of this element x is uh, k choose 1 minus k choose 2 plus k choose 3 and so on down to plus or minus k choose k. And what is this number? Well, let's see. It's very close to the alternating sum of all of the binomial coefficients. We're just missing the lead term, uh, since it starts at k choose 1 and not k choose 0. So once you take that into account, we should get the answer. So that is to say, um, this is the, the, the relevant formula is the summation of the, the alternating sum of the k choose j's, as j runs from 0 to k, is 0. And this is almost exactly that, except it's missing the first term, and there's a little bit of a, a sign to take into account. So let's see how that works. So we're trying to evaluate this sum, and we see that, um, well, re let's write down the formula k choose 0 minus k choose 1 plus dot dot dot, the alternating sum down to ch k choose k, that's equal to 0. That's the formula from the, the previous page expanded. And now if you just take all of the terms except for the first one and bring them to the other side, you see that k choose 0 is equal to k choose 1 minus k choose 2 and so on. And so, well, um, excuse me. Oh yeah, the, 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 the alternating sum is equal to k choose 0, and that's equal to 1. So that proves that this element x contributes uh, 1 to the right-hand side, and that's exactly what you want. It's supposed when you add up over all of the elements x, you're going to get the cardinality of the union. So uh, let me just write that out again. The, the formula I'm trying to prove is this and each element x contributes 1 to the left-hand side and also 1 to the right-hand side. So that proves the result. Okay, good. So we've already seen an application of this to the derangement numbers. I now want to look at a different application, which is counting with constraints. So suppose I asked you the following. What's the number of ways of putting 12 identical balls into uh, four distinct boxes? 
um, with some constraints where you're only allowed to put at most five uh, into box one and at most uh, three into box two uh, at most six into box three and at most two into box four so these are the constraints the idea uh, is that we know how to do this counting if there wasn't a constraint. That would be 12 balls into four boxes. And remember, that's the famous number uh, 13 choose, excuse me, 15 choose 3. And I'll remind you the reason is that we take our 12 balls and we add uh, three more balls to it to give 15 balls, identical, and we have to choose, oh, sorry, an extra ball there, yeah, we have to choose uh, from these 15, we have to pick three to color and make the dividers like this, and once we've chosen the dividers, then we get the distribution three, three, four, plus two, in each of the boxes and those numbers add up to 12. Okay, so that's just a reminder where this number came from. So without the constraints, the answer would be 15 choose three. So we wanna count all of them and then subtract off the ones which violate the constraints. So let's think about that for a second. So the constraints are um, less than or equal to five, uh, three, six, and four in each of the boxes. And um, well, what do I want? I want the arrangements uh, which satisfy what? Um, they satisfy uh, constraint or condition number one and condition number two and condition three and condition four. All four of the constraints have to hold. And the AND there is telling me that I'm computing some intersection. Uh, and remember, unions are ORs and intersections are ANDs. And recall that the inclusion-exclusion principle, there's two versions of it. Where one of them tells you how to count the order of a union, and the other is how to count the order of the intersection of a bunch of complements. And, well, since we're talking about intersections, this is the version that I want to use. And so I need to figure out what these sets SI are so that it, it fits the problem. And it's important to notice here that, that these, the formula involves the intersection of a bunch of complements. So I want to define S1 so that S1 bar is the arrangements with, with, with less than or equal to 5 in box 1. And uh, so that is to say S1 is greater than or equal to 6 in box 1. Uh, so S2 bar is less than or equal to 3 in box 2, which is to say S2 is greater than or equal to 4 in box 2. That's a misprint. That should be greater than or equal to 4. So here are the sets that I want to define. Uh, again, S um, I want to take S1 to be the arrangements with greater than or equal to 6 in box 1, and S2 is greater than or equal to 4 in box 2, and S3 is greater than or equal to 7 in box 3, and finally greater than or equal to 3 in box 4, and I want the intersection of the SI bars. And so that intersection by inclusion exclusion is this set of order uh, 15 choose 3 minus the um, order of these SIs, each S uh, the sum of the order of the SIs, and then the pairs and so on. So let's look at the SIs. What is the order of S1? S1 is where you have at least 6 in box 1. Well, the balls are identical, so put six balls in box one. Now what? Well, you have six more balls to distribute. So now it's just a question of putting six balls into four boxes. And how can you do that? Well, the answer is nine choose three. So the order of S1 is nine choose three. 
Similarly, the order of S2 uh, is you put four balls into box two, and you have eight balls left. They can go anywhere you want. And so uh, the answer is 8 into 4, which is 11, choose 3. And you get the picture. Uh, S3 is going to be uh, 5 into 4. Uh, which is 8, choose 3, and finally uh, S4 is uh, 9 into 4, which is 12, choose 3. Okay, so let's put all of this together. Uh, here's Here are these numbers again, uh, 6, 4, 7, and 3. And so uh, remember the, the, art, the cardinality of S1 was 9, choose 3, and S2 was 11, choose 3. And S3 was uh, 8, choose 3. And S4 was 12, choose 3. Those are the ones I just computed. Now I move on to the pairs. What's the uh, order of S1 intersect S2? Well, that's at least 6 in the first box and 4 in the second. So you put those 10 in. And you have 15 minus 10, which is to say, uh, um, uh, 5, choose 3. And similarly, if you uh, do S1 and S3, you put in 13, and what you get is 2, choose 3, which is 0, and so on and so forth. S1 intersect S4 is not 6, choose 3, and you compute each of the pairs these ways, where in each term you take 15 minus the sum of the two corresponding numbers. Finally, uh, S, the S3 and 4 number add up to 10, and 15 minus 10 is 5, so that's 5 choose 3. Now what about triples? What's the cardinality of S1 intersect S2 intersect S3? Well, those three numbers add up to 17, and, well, we only have 12 balls, and so the answer is 0, and, in fact, all of these uh, add up to uh, greater than 12, so all of the remaining numbers are 0. Uh, the intersection of all triples and the intersection of all quad the, the single quadruple is uh, zero. Okay, so those are all the numbers we need. Now we just need to add them up with the appropriate signs. The conclusion of all of this is the following. The number of allowed arrangements is the following. It's uh, 15 choose 3 minus the sum of the order of the SIs. There are four of these terms, which I computed to be these four. And now you add the uh, terms coming from pairs, which uh, turned out to be these. There are six of these terms. And then the triples and, and um, quadruples all gave zero. So the last terms were all zero. And that's the answer. So what is that? Well, let's see. I'll do that in my head. And it uh, looks like it comes out to approximately 30. OK, that's a good place to stop. I will uh, pick it up again next time.